At this hour, the national polling average shows Hillary Clinton with a seven-point lead in a two-way race and an identical lead in a four-way. The betting odds continue to show her a favorite now by nearly five to one. Now, you just saw that real clear average, but many of the polls factored into that have significantly different results. On Thursday, the latest Fox News poll had Hillary Clinton up by seven points in a four-way race. Then Sunday, an ABC Washington Post poll showed Clinton up by only four. The roller coaster continues as NBC News and the Wall Street Journal put Clinton up by 11 on the same day. How is this possible, people ask me. Scott Jennings, the political analysis for the George W. Bush White House, joins me now from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Scott, I hear this all the time. People say, these polls are all over the place. How can we believe any of them? They seem to have disproportionate numbers of Democrats in the samples that favor Hillary. What about it? Well, some of the national polling has been noisy. Some of that is racked up to the fact that they use random digit dialing, which can create noise. Uh, very few of the national surveys actually call up a voter file, although some do. The other issue is, when are these polls taken? Uh, you can get great variance in results depending on when you're in the field. The final issue, I would say, is that margin of error is not a joke. Margin of error matters a lot. And so if they say their poll is a margin of error of three or three and a half points, that's on each candidate's number. And so you can get some variance in these surveys, and that's why most uh, statistical analysts will tell you, trust the polling averages. And right now the averages point to a Hillary Clinton uh, lead in this race. Yeah, tell me what you, you mean by causing noise. Uh, you, said, you said at the beginning of that answer that some of these factors cause noise. Uh, explain that if you could. Sure. If you're using random digit dialing, you're calling up random people and asking them if they're going to vote. And you don't actually know whether they're registered to vote or not. They can tell you they are, and they can tell you they may have voted for Romney or Obama in 2012. But that doesn't make it true, and a lot of people don't want to admit they voted for a losing candidate, or maybe they don't want to admit that they aren't registered to vote at all. And so a random digit dialing is something that most campaigns don't do anymore. Most campaigns right. call directly off the voter file because then you can actually guarantee you're speaking to someone who's actually got a chance to vote in the election. Now, talk to me a little bit about, uh, more about margin of error. When you say if a margin of error is three and a half, which is a common margin, three and a half, four points, that means that that you're talking about a range that could be as high as seven or eight points, right? That's exactly right. And that margin of error is on each candidate's number. The margin of error is actually higher on the difference of the two candidates. It's like one and a half times uh, what the difference is. And so uh, you see a number that says Hillary Clinton is winning 50 to 45. Well, she could be anywhere from 47 to 53, and Trump could be anywhere from 42 to 48. And so a margin of error means something, and it means the candidates are likely to get in that range. And that's why you might see an ABC Washington Post at plus four and somebody else at plus 11, because the margin uh, would account for most of that variance. Now, recently, one of our recent polls had uh, Secretary Clinton up by a couple of points. And then we came along some days later, things had happened in the interim for sure, and we had her up seven. And people looked at the two polls and they said, well, wait a minute. In the sample there, the uh, Democrats were, were polled by or plus two, they were two percentage points more than the Republicans in that poll. And when you came to the next poll where she was up seven, it was Democrats plus nine. So doesn't that explain the result and make it clear that it's simply because you oversampled Democrats? Well, it's a good question, and people are right to ask questions about polling, but in this case, it's not a good metric to unwind a poll. Party registration or self-identified party registration is not something we have a national database on. Uh, you can't tell me how many Democrats there are or Republicans because party registration in most states is a state of mind. Some states do make you vote in a party or register by party, but in most cases it's an attitude. It's not a demographic. And so the truth is, in most presidential elections since the 1950s, Democrats have had a slight or, in some cases, enormous party identification lead over Republicans. But it hasn't always meant that Republicans lost. In 1980, Democrats had a registration ID of plus 15, and we know Ronald Reagan won. Democrats led in 84 and 88, and Republicans won. Uh, Democrats enjoyed a lead in 2000, and Bush won. It was even in 2004, but in both of Obama's elections, Democrats did also have a self-ID advantage. However, in the 2014 uh, midterm, Brit, Republicans were R plus one nationally. So you see some fluidity in how people are determining which party they are in, and it can be affected by who they're voting for at that moment, what's in the news, and other factors uh, that really don't have anything to do with how they're registered in their particular state. Uh, very helpful, Scott. Thanks very much.